hey guys welcome to digital Srini channel on youtube and i hope you guys subscribe to this channel already if not this would be the time go ahead and hit the subscribe button and while you're there also hit the bell icon so you get notified as soon as these type of new videos get uploaded now in this video i'm going to talk about the difference between upsampling 2d and conv 2d transpose uh, operations that are available as part of your keras tensorflow now why do we need to understand this because we commonly encounter this as part of units or generative adversarial networks in fact the last dozen videos we have been focusing on units so it does make sense for us to understand what the difference is because i'm pretty sure if you searched for code on unit uh, you know if you go to github you'll find a bunch of code uh, very nice code but some people use upsampling some people use convolution 2d so it does make sense for us to understand right so let's go ahead and have a quick look at our unit this is not the one uh, this is not the one from the published paper. This is the one that I created because the published paper uses, uh, I think, 572 by 572 or some other dimensions. But it does make sense for us to think in terms of uh, 256 by 256 by 1, right? So this is our grayscale 256 by 256 image. And on the left hand side, you have the encoder path. And on the right hand side, you have the decoder path. So the image goes from 256 dimension all the way down to 16 and then it goes from 16 all the way back up to 256 right because you want your original image back with segmented uh, pixels so on the way down we are uh, performing these operations right max pool 2 by 2 what does it do it actually applies 2 by 2 grid on your image and takes the maximum value within that uh, 2 by 2 grid so what's the result of that when you do that your image gets half right because it's a 2 by 2 grid so you go from 256 to 128 to 64 to 32 to 16 so how do we do exactly the opposite operation so for that you can either use upsampling or conv2d transpose and this is what we are trying to understand what is the difference between these two okay now just to give you a uh, quick uh, you know explanation of what the difference is first of all these are the two common types of layers that we are using as uh, to increase the dimension of these arrays right our array in in uh, initially was uh, here 16 by 16 along this axis and then we go to 32 and then 64 and so on right so we are increasing this dimension because so so we are basically taking an array and then doubling its size as we go along and how do we do that? That's the question here. So upsampling 2D is like the opposite of pooling, right? Max pooling is taking this and then taking the max, but upsampling is not putting the max value, but it actually repeats the rows and columns of the input. So if you have your rows and columns, it just repeats it. That's it, doing while you're increasing the dimensions. Con2D transpose, it performs this upscaling, upsampling, sorry, and also performs convolution it's in the name right it performs a convolution operation and we know what convolution is right you have a kernel and that kernel gets multiplied with uh, with your image pixel uh, values uh, with a given stride right so meaning it the the output image size depends upon the stride and commonly we use a stride of two by two because that doubles the size of the image that's it so that's the primary difference between these two this is just upsampling this is convolution okay and we'll get into code to have a quick look at uh, what what it really means in case you still have any questions uh, and uh, which one to use if the, if you have a question about if you're waiting for me to tell you hey use this and not that that's not going to happen because uh at least I, I didn't find many uh, resources where they compared these two. I have read some papers, not papers, um, I haven't read any papers. I have read some blogs or articles where they mention about con 2 transpose showing a checkerboard artifact. So this is where when you zoom into your image, eventually you see some checkerboard uh, patterns. But that has been reported on uh, uh, generative adversarial networks. I haven't seen much of any comparison between these two as part of UNet. Unfortunately, I do not have much of a data to talk about these. I have used both and I got decent results using both. So the whole point of this tutorial is to let you know what the difference between these two is and if you find out uh, if one is better than the other let others know about it but as of now let's understand let's focus on understanding the difference now before jumping into the code let's just quickly see what we mean in a very visual way we are all human beings we like to see things uh, and understand things in a visual way so let's put this in a visual way let's say this is my Im image 
3 by 3 image or input okay these are obviously uh, some bunch of numbers so when you do up sampling uh, you can just look at the repeating pattern right so you have this red checkered box right there so it's red red and then the so let's say this is one two and three right so one one two two and three three and then one one two two three three because it repeats both along the rows and also along the columns that's it so this is how it's expanding okay so this is a nice visual way of understanding what upsampling 2d does now Con 2D transpose can be a bit challenging to explain in a visual way, in a visual way, but let's fix certain parameters and then see how the output looks like. Okay, so here I'm doing Con 2D transpose using a kernel size of one by one. Okay, just one by one kernel size and a stride of two. Okay, that means it's doubling the size. So if my input size is three by three, it's going to six by six. Okay, so same as up sampling two by two. So that part is clear, and then. This is convolution operation, right? So what does convolution mean? You have a kernel and you multiply your, that kernel with your image. If you're not careful, like for example, if you don't define anything when you're defining con 2D transpose, then that kernel is defined, is automatically defined by Keras. Uh, uh, when I say kernel, it's basically a bunch of weights, right? These are the weights we are optimizing while we are training. I hope things are making sense. So if you if you uh, if you don't define what the weights are, I think uh, Keras uses uh, I forgot which one the default is. It randomly assigns weights. Let me put it that way. Okay. So it randomly assigns weights and multiplies that. So what I'm showing you here is where I said don't do random weights. Just put my weights equal to one, so I can see the effect of uh, effect of con 2D transpose. But in reality, these values would be not. Uh, same as your input, they will be different based on what the weights of your uh, uh, kernel are going to be as part of this convolution operation. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And in addition, what is the depth of this, right? The depth of this is how many filters do you want? In this example, I just used one filter, but if you typically in unit, we put 64 filters or 128, right? As we go down, we go up in number of filters and uh, down in, in the size, in the dimensions. So if this doesn't make sense, let's jump into our uh, Python code and, uh, uh, and have a uh, quick understanding of what's, what's going on. Okay, so let's jump into our spider IDE. Okay, I'm using spider IDE, and uh, obviously you can you can you can do this on any any uh, Python, right? I mean, uh, we are not there, is, there are no tricks here. The only thing is uh, I have a uh, GPU-based TensorFlow, so it's going to spit out a whole bunch of uh, stuff on on my screen. Um, this is still a new workstation for me, so I'm trying to figure out how to mute those warning signs that, you know, the, the warning messages that TensorFlow is going to give, but let's ignore that, okay? That's just a quick warning. Okay, now uh, let's do two things, right? We have to understand what upsampling is, and we have to understand what CON2D transpose is. So let's go ahead and uh, import the right libraries here. So uh, from uh, I'm going to import as array from NumPy because we are going to define our image or our kernel. In this case, let's just do three by three, okay? Uh, I mean, in, in my PowerPoint, I just showed you like three by three of colors. Obviously, uh, let's use numbers so it makes more sense. And uh, let's define our X as a three by three array. So our X is a three by three array of certain values, okay? Now we need to reshape it because anything how do, what does a sequential method like what does this uh, this these models expect right what type of shape it expects the number of images as the first uh you know uh, uh, as the first one and then x and y right your your uh, dimensions pixel dimensions of your array well of your image or dimensions of your array and the last one is the number of channels if it's a color image you will have three if it's a grayscale image you will have one so let's go ahead and reshape our image uh, to and and then let's just go ahead and print x dot shape so you can see okay now instead of three by three we have one three three and one right i mean this is again basics one stands for we have only one image of size three by three and this is a grayscale image that's it now we are ready to define a model so let's use our sequential model because obviously that makes it easy for us to define this network. Uh, so uh, <laughs> network, I mean, it's just, just one layer right there. So as part of sequential, my input is of this shape, which is three by three by one. 
This is again, no tricks, right? This is what we do normally. And this is where I'm adding the upsampling layer. That's it. There is nothing else, just upsampling of size what? Two by two, and then just print the summary. So when I do this, it's going to print out uh, a summary right there. Obviously, the number of parameters that we're going to train are zero because there are no trainable parameters here. It's, this is not a convolution. This is basically upsampling. That's it. You're taking it and repeating the numbers that you have. So the number of trainable parameters are zero. No convolution operations happening and no weights and biases. This is very important to understand. Okay, so just upsampling. And the output would be six, six, and one. You can see right away because we are using two by two uh, stride, uh, sorry, size, and our input shape is three by three. So this is output is going to be six by six. So let's go ahead and predict on our input values of X. Okay, so let's go ahead and predict it. It's going to give us an output of one by six by six by one. Let's just reshape it to our six by six format so we can print it out and make sense out of it. There you go. So this is very similar to the, the image I showed you in the PowerPoint, right? So this one, two, three, four, it's just repeating the columns and rows, that's it. It's just copying these values into how many ever. So now if you change this, actually let's do this for fun. Let's change this to three, oops, I'm sorry. Number lock on my keyboard, otherwise it's doing page down apparently. Okay, let's do three and three and repeat exactly the same, okay? So what happens, what do you expect? There you go. If I do three by three, my input is also three by three. So now I have nine by nine matrix. Again, the numbers are copied column wise and row wise. That's it. So one, 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 two, two, two. Okay. So do this exercise. Now our uh, actual images for training are going to be, I don't know, 64 by 64, 128 by 128. But this is exactly what's happening when you're doing upscaling. That's it. Uh, so do I keep using the term upscaling? This is upsampling, sorry about that. Okay, now you can do asymmetric uh, size, but let's go back to two by two. So I hope this makes sense. Now let's go ahead and clear everything and make it ready for our next part, which is understanding convert 2D transpose. So we are going to do exactly the same, same input. So it makes us uh, it a bit easy for us to understand. And now let's go ahead and define the model. I'm, I'm doing model one instead of model, but pretty much the same. Sequential, input shape, but convert 2D transpose here. How many filters? One. Again, this is a convolution operation and upscaling combined. So how many filters? Just one. In, in our uh, unit architecture, we have filters of what? 64, 128, 256, 512, you know, how many ever filters, but let's just do one. So it makes it easy for us to understand. And then this is, uh, this is the kernel size of one by one. Okay. Again, we are not going to change any, uh, uh, uh any of our, uh, you know, uh, values over there. We're just multiplying it with a single value. That's it. Okay. Uh, and strides is two by two, right? This is what's going to upscale it. Uh, up sample it, not upscale, but up sample it from uh, whatever the size image, in this case, three by three to six by six. And I'm using kernel initializer as once. Again, if you do not use kernel initializer, then uh, it randomly assigns the weights and, uh, and uh, multiplies your values by that weight. In fact, if it doesn't make sense, let's go ahead and print this so you can see what I'm talking about. So, here again, just like before, it, the output is going to be one, six, six, and one, but you see the number of trainable parameters here? There are two. Why are there two trainable parameters? Well, one is the weight, the other one is the bias. There are two trainable parameters, weights and bias, right? And here I'm saying for the weight, go ahead and use a uh, weight of one, that's it. And since this is not, we are not training it, the bias, I assume, is going to be zero because we are not training it yet, okay? So that's 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 where we are, and uh, we can see without this later on. And then we see the model summary. So, and the this next part is exactly the same as what we have done before. It throws a bunch of uh, stuff over there, and then uh, let's go ahead and reshape it, and let's go ahead and print it. So here is the final output. Let's also print the other one, upsampled one, okay? 
so we can see the difference. Oh, we, we deleted that. Sorry about that. But anyway, this, this gives you an idea. You see, we, our input is uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 6, right? So our input is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And our output is 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. So he, it inserted zeros in between, in between one, uh, our values. That's it. And you see the padding here? All zeros? All zeros? That's because the output shape in this case, you know, is equal to the input shape. So it kind of padded my output with all zeros right there. Zero, 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 zero. So the output matches the input. So this is what's happening when you perform a con 2D transpose. Just for the fun of it, let's remove this. Uh, where is my model? Uh, just a second. Uh, yeah, let's remove this kernel initializer equal to ones, which means it randomly assigns these kernel uh, 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 values. It initiates this. I think it's using he, uh, he normal or one of the one of the, uh, you know, uh, standard ones uh, from Keras. But let's go ahead and do this. Let's redefine this and let's look at the output. And let's do that. And this and let's print it out and look at the output values negative 0.35 negative 0.7 negative 1.7 i don't know why they're all negative if we run it again it probably changes it uh, to something else uh, let's let's do this one more time <laughs> so you understand this uh, so where is uh, where is my model right there so let's run all of these lines one more time and uh, again negative 11 point you see how the values are different this time okay and let's do this one more time. Now you see how the values are different again. Again, this is, I hope this makes sense. Normally, you would not define anything uh, in terms of, normally you would not define once as your kernel initializer because as you're training, you want these weights and biases to be trained. So, so, uh, so your initial value should be somewhere, you know, not true random, but somewhere where it makes sense. And then, uh, and then you train the you train the model. In this case, again, I'm using once just to, for demonstration purpose. So our output, you know, is multiplying only one with our input values. So we can compare that. Oh, hey, this is what's going on. One, two, three, four. Okay, enough enough explaining the basics. But some of you will probably benefit from those uh, from that explanation. I hope you found this tutorial to be useful. And uh, again, like I mentioned earlier, if you guys know the benefits of one over the other, please post it in the comments so everyone can benefit from this. In the next video, I'm going to summarize unit architecture. So if you still have any doubts or questions about unit, hopefully that will clear, you know, and we'll actually, instead of writing each line by line, you know, writing the unit line by line, let's actually define certain functions because there are a lot of repeat, repeated structures as part of unit, okay? Let's define a function and then go ahead and, uh, uh, you know, and uh, write literally a few lines of code to define this entire entire uh, unit. So hopefully you'll tune in for that video. And again, until then, please subscribe. Thank you.